Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing the power reducing formulas. All right, so what is a power reducing formula? Well, basically, if you have a trigonometric function like this one and you want to make it into a lower power, like, you know, uh, such as uh, the first power, obviously, this is a squared function and you want to make it into a function like sine, cosine, or tangent to the first power. They're going to use one of these three formulas here, right? Power reducing formulas. Now, why would you want to use this? Well, usually it's something like this. If you have an integral of sine squared theta d theta, and you want to make it, you know, you obviously want to solve that integral. Well, you could do some kind of thing with like, I guess, uh, I mean, you might have to do like double integration to solve that or say like, you know, it's integral of like sine theta times sine theta d theta and then do I, a, you know, like integration by parts. And you, re you really probably don't want to do that, right? Integration by parts is a pain in the ass, and um, really double integration is usually not, you have usually haven't done that yet. So in order to do this kind of integral, you would have to use one of these formulas. You could convert it into, say, 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2, and that integral would be easily solved. You just take that 1 half outside, and then... You make it into two different integrals, and then you just get one half theta minus and then this integral over here. It'd probably be another one half, and then cosine two theta. Well, that wouldn't be cosine. Obviously, integral of cosine is sine, so this would be sine two theta, and then plus c. Now, this is just one of the examples of the reasons that you might want to use uh, an angle of, sorry, a power reducing formula. So now let's get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. All right. So now, how do we get these formulas? Well, we should already know by now the formulas for the sum of uh, the cosine of a sum of two different angles, or the sine of a sum of two different angles. Well, the cosine obviously is going to be the more important one. As you can see, it is the one that's almost exclusively used by these formulas. Um, so let's write that one out. Cosine of a plus b equals cosine a cosine a times cosine b minus sine a sine b. Now, this we're, if we're looking for 2 theta, which is what's over here, we're going to need to say cosine 2 theta. Now, if the thetas are the same, then it's just going to be cosine theta cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta. Well, what does this look like? It's just cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. All right, so let me, whoops, let me get rid of let me get rid of these things over here because they're not going to be useful for us anymore. And put that up there, where it's not going to be in the way. All right. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to say, all right, here we have cosine 2 theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. How is that going to help us? Well, we're looking for sine squared theta. And here is our sine squared theta. Now, 
what do we need to do in order to get another kind of thing for our sine squared theta? Well, we have another equation with sine squared theta, which happens to be sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. All right, well, now with the system of equations, we have cosine squared theta here, cosine squared theta, sine squared theta, sine squared theta. So now we have kind of a relationship between these two different equations. And we can see that if we rewrite this in terms of sine squared theta, the second one down here, sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta, um, then we get cosine 2 theta equals cosine squared theta minus 1 minus cosine squared theta. Well, this just becomes cosine 2 theta equals cosine squared theta minus 1 plus cosine squared theta, which is cosine 2, that kind of looks like an exponent, cosine 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And then we can solve for cosine squared theta. Cosine squared theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta, and then divided by 2. So there we have our cosine squared theta identity. Now, we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So how are we going to get there from this one over here? Well, let's just write it in. Sine squared theta plus, and then this is cosine squared theta. So we're going to take this term over here and bring it over here. Cosine, whoops. 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. And then that's equal to 1. So sine squared theta equals 1 minus 1 plus cosine. Oops. Cosine 2 theta over. Two. Now, if we look at this here, we can see that in order to make this work out, we're going to need to kind of put this in brackets here. And we get sine squared theta equals 1 minus 1 half plus negative cosine 2 theta over 2. And then this just becomes 1 half plus, oops, 1 half minus cosine 2 theta over 2 equals 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2, which is exactly what we have up here. Now, how do we find the tangent of this uh, tangent squared theta? How do we convert that? into these over here. Well, it's very simple. All we're going to have to do is say tangent of theta we know is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. Then it stands to reason that tangent squared theta equals sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Then, since we know that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2, then cosine squared theta is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Then tangent, squ tangent squared theta must be equal to, since these 2's cancel out here, 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 1 plus cosine 2 theta, which is right the same as we have up here. Anyway, 
Thank you for watching this video. Leave a like if you liked it. See you next time.